Well, today in our Trove News video, we're going to be looking at Mexico, unlocking the treasures of the deep. And in particular, we're going to look at a, a really exciting discovery, Trion 1. Trion was the first deep water discovery in Mexican waters, and indeed the first deep water development in Mexico. So by way of background, here's a look at Mexico's oil production in millions of barrels of oil per day for the period 1965 to 2022. You see, it got up uh, just shy of 4 million barrels a day, but since around about 2004, it's been on a decline right down to about 2 million, just under 2 million barrels of oil a day. In recent years, it looks like that decline has been stabilized. But what is the future? What does it hold for the country? So Pemex, we note, its debt stands at $107 billion. It's one of the world's most indebted companies. So needs all the help it can get. Here's the location, and this is based on our worldwide Trove database. And you'll see here the Trion well is, is highlighted here. If we home into this area here, just offshore Mexico, in the Gulf of Mexico, we can see here's the U.S.-Mexico border. And the Trion discovery is just south of the USA in the Mexican waters here. It's in the Pedido Foul Belt, and we'll have a look at that. It's about 180 kilometers from the Mexican coastline, about 30 kilometers from the U.S. maritime border. In water depths of 2,500 meters. Now... When we uh, look on this map, again, we're showing where the Pedido foal belt is and uh, Trion's somewhere in, in around about here. What I love about this map is that um, if we kind of go into it in a little bit more detail, just some of the shapes that we get in here. So over here in the Mississippi fan fold, we get all these salt walls. And then here on the shelf, on the Texas, Louisiana shelf, we have very, very small isolated salt diapers but then as we get further offshore they seem to get bigger and wider and broader and become very very significant really getting to the greatest extent in the Salina del Bravo or uh, Lamprea foal belt regions so here's uh, the Pedido foal belt oh Campeche salt basin down here also got some very very interesting different uh, salt trends this is the place to be studying uh, salt tectonics now we're going to be having a look at a line, and uh, here is this uh, the line, it's a west-east line, and uh, this is what it looks like. So showing the regional geology, in the west we have the Burgos Basin, and here the Pedido Foal Belt. Now, if we put on some of the major stratigraphies, we can see that it's really uh, passing from the continental crust out into the oceanic crust, is marking the transition from the Burgos to the Pedido Foal Belt. And we highlight here, there is some of the Mesozoics down here now, relatively thin in the Burgos Basin, but with a more deposition of the Jurassic Cretaceous interval here within the Perdido region. Above that, we have the, uh, the salt, and the salt is mobilized, and we see all these diapiric structures here, both in the Burgos and in the Perdido. And we've got very different geology above the salt here, Primarily, it's Miocene, a sort of a thin plio Pleistocene, whereas we have thinner late tertiary within the Perdido fill belt. Here's a look at the discovery at Trion 1, and uh, you can see the seismic line here. It looks to be quite a complicated structure here. There are two stacked Eocene reservoirs within the field. And it's a salt cord inversion anticline. And you can see it's almost like a sort of a flower structure. Lots of inverted features going on in here. But when you look at it mapped out, it actually looks like quite a nice looking um, four-way dip closure here, albeit a very elongate north-south. You can see some of these offsetting faults, but they aren't having a major impact on the contours as we go around. So a relatively well-behaved uh, four-way dip feature here. Number of uh, appraisal wells have been drilled on this feature now, so it is well understood. We can have a look at the trap development here, and we can see that uh, as we go through time, this is how the uh, the trap is thought to have evolved. When we look at the key dates in, in all of this, we've got reservoir rocks here. The Wilcox is basically a Pedocene eocene aged uh, sandstone, and then we have the Frio, which is Upper Oligocene. In terms of seals, we've got lots of shales in the system. Trap formation, well, 
around about the time of salt mobilization, halokinesis, and that's uh, when the traps were formed here in the Eocene to early Miocene. Petroleum generation, well, that's uh, thought to be within the sort of the Eocene time frame, uh, with migration in late Eocene, and uh, since then uh, it's been preserved. So the critical moment for this basin is really the onset of the trap formation. And you can see there's kind of a complex story to the evolution of the trap. Now, the development scheme for Trion is expected to be a floating production unit. This is the uh, floating production unit here and uh, a floating storage, so a tanker, basically, uh, that will export the oil and it's piped up into this tanker here. Now, that will have 950,000 barrels of oil storage. The production facility will have the capability of processing 145 million standard cubic feet of gas per day. Here's the uh, the subsea layout, as you can see in here, and there's going to be 12 producers, 10 water injectors, and the gas is going to be re-injected, so there's going to be two gas injectors as well. So if we look at the timeline and who's involved in all this, well, back in 2012, Pemex discovered Trion, and BHP acquired a 60% stake back in 2017. Now, with the BHP Woodside merger in 2022, it became Woodside Energy, and the development plan was announced this year in 2023, and production startup anticipated to be in 2028. So that's the appraisal program there, the timing of the wells there for information. In terms of size, Currently, the assessment is some 479 million barrels of oil equivalent, contingent resources, 2C resources. Now, the oil is a 27 degree API oil. It's low carbon dioxide and there's no hydrogen sulfide associated with it. Now, the development, it's anticipated emissions are going to be below the industry standard, even the industry deep water standard. And so you can see Trion here is coming in at about 11.8 kilograms of carbon dioxide equivalent per barrel of oil equivalent. So uh, it's much lower emissions than, than many of these other sources of fossil fuels. In terms of um, CapEx, that's capital expenditure of some 7.2 billion US dollars for the, for the development of the field. Do you want to know much more? Well, if you do, have a look at Trove. We've got all the fields in Mexico, and this is the sort of detail that you'll find for the Trion field. And there's much, much more. So get in touch. There's the email address. Drop us a line. So what have we learned today? Well, Trion's definitely an exciting project to watch develop. It'll be a, a welcome production ad for Pemex. Production in Mexico seems to have stabilized in the last few years. Perhaps Trion will uh, not just offset that decline, but perhaps uh, increase production. So uh, will it help unlock other Pedido full belt discoveries and help them reach an investment decision? Well, we know about Maximino, Miras, Nobilis, Supremus, and others. For full information, including volumes in Trove, please contact us. There's the email address. Thank you very much for watching. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, get in touch. Look forward to seeing you back on our channel before too long. Bye for now.